Hi there, darlings of God. Are you ready to um, continue in this mind renovation process? I want to uh, I want to stress to you this morning. Uh, it is my morning. I know it's afternoon for some of you in a different time in in the Eastern time zone. Um, I want to stress something to you um, that I cannot stress enough. I can't stress this enough um, that it's important for you to understand uh, that that this mind renovation process is not about you trying to become something that you're not. It's also not about trying to get to some level of understanding or some level of faith where you can, uh, whereby you, you will convince God to give you something that you don't already have. Uh, it's the exact opposite, actually. The whole purpose of, of re renewing your mind as a, as a believer and the reason why I'm doing this is because there is a, a gross lack of understanding within the body of Christ among God's kids in this family, in Papa's family. There are so many of his kids. Uh, I would say more than not. And I know that's a big statement, um, but I absolutely believe that it's true. That more than more than those who do understand their I identity, their the majority within this family of God don't understand who they are, and and what they have, and they don't know how to use it. You know, when I was when I was pastoring, I pastored a, a small church. Um, for about five years, and um, and the the Lord gave me this this thought, and it kind of became a uh, a phrase that I used often in explaining what my job was as their pastor, and I, I would tell them often, my job is to tell you who you are, what you have, and how to use it. My job is to help is to help raise up a group of people who understand who they are, what they have, and how to use it. And so though I'm not formally uh, pastoring a church, um, I am still a pastor at heart. I have a shepherd's heart, and, and my, my mandate has not changed. God has equipped me and called me to to teach people who they are, what they have, and how to use it. And so this mind renovation process that I'm, that I'm helping you go through, that I'm teaching you through, that's the goal. Not, not for you, not to help you become something that, that you're not, because if you've been in church for very long, you, you, you'll, you'll know that that's much of what comes from the from the pulpit that much of the the message that gets con conveyed whether it's intended or not the message that gets conveyed over and over and over again to the body of Christ is you are lacking in some kind of way you you are missing some important element you you need something that you don't have you need to become something that you're not and that's that's all wrong <laughs> It's all wrong. Any any teaching that that suggests that that you need to try to become something that you're not is missing the point entirely. Any teaching that su suggests to you that you need God to give you to give you something that you don't already p possess is 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 missing the point entirely and whoever teaches those things have a lack of revelation of the finished work of the cross and what happened 
what happened when we were born again. They apparently have no understanding of our union with, with Christ. And so part of what my job is, part of what God has called me to do, is to help teach you the real truth, the real gospel, what really to teach you what really happened when you put faith in what Jesus did on the, on the cross and you were born again, what, what happened? Um, and so, um, so the whole mind renovation process, it's really, really, really important for you to understand as you go through this, as you listen to me say these things, it has nothing to do with you trying to become something that you're not. It's the opposite. It's that, is that there is a spiritual reality. There is a reality in the spirit that is your true identity. You, you have an identity and it's in Christ. And it's because of your union with, with, with him. But you have this flesh that wants to cloak that. Your flesh wants to dominate. And so, and, and so as you, and you know, there's input, you receive input through your five senses. You receive input from other people, other voices. Uh, you have an enemy who talks to you on a regular basis and tries to shape the internal picture you carry of, of who you are. And what's, what's true about you and what's true for you, what you have and what you don't have. And so it, 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 and that input, that input comes, it comes sometimes in a volume that is just overwhelming. And like the voices that talk to us are overwhelming. And many of them, most of them are not speaking in agreement with the truth of God's word. And, and so that's why it takes, it takes diligence. It takes a, a, a willingness to aggressively oppose that, to reject those lies, to bring thoughts into captivity, cast down it, 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 it imaginations that, that dare to exalt themselves against your knowledge of, of Christ. And what is your knowledge of Christ? That you are one with him, that he is your identity, that he finished the work. He finished the work. So there is no need for striving in your life. You only need to rest. So these are all these truths that I'm speaking to you and that you're, you're, you're speaking out of your mouth. These run contrary to, to the majority of things that you hear and that your, your flesh speaks to you, that your five senses speak to you, that, that people close to you may speak, or even, even ministers that you, that you listen to. Your pastor may not speak in agreement with these things, but none of that changes the fact that this is the truth. And so, um, so I just needed to stress that to you, that as you go through this, don't think of this as you trying to become something that you're not. It's that you're, you're, you're changing your thinking. You're aggressively opposing thoughts that are contradicting the truth of who you of who you are so that your heart belief will change concerning who you are and what you have and as your heart belief changes your your experience in life will change and you will begin to personally benefit from those things that you have put possession of in your spirit your flesh will begin to lay down and it'll begin to make way, give way to the spiritual reality. And the real you will be able to step out, be able to just step out and, and it'll be a whole new life for you. Literally can be a whole new life for you. Okay. So having said all of that, let's, let's, Let's start. I'm going to make these statements. 
I encourage you to re repeat them after me. Papa, thank you for loving me. Thank you for loving me when I was your enemy. Thank you for considering me worth the sacrifice of your only begotten son. Thank you for loving me enough to teach me how to walk in more freedom. I believe it's true that it is for freedom that Christ has made me free. And I choose today to embrace more freedom. I was not made to live in bondage. I was not made to struggle through this life, barely making it with my head hanging down. You have purposed and you have purchased freedom for me. Your thoughts towards me are more in number than I could count. And your word says, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. Thoughts of good and not of evil to give you an expected end. Thank you for thinking of me and that all of those thoughts are for my good. Lord Jesus, I love you. <laughs> I love you, Jesus. You are magnificent. You are perfect in all of your ways. And I embrace you today as my identity. I don't hold you up before me as my example, who I need to strive to be like. Instead, I embrace you as my identity. As you are, so am I in this world. I am seated in heavenly places with you. I am righteous with your very own righteousness. There is no spot in me. Because I have been made righteous by grace through faith. And it's all because of what you did in my place. How could I ever thank you enough? How could I ever praise you enough? You deserve the reward of your suffering. You have earned it. I receive the reward of your suffering by grace through faith. I am favored, highly favored in this family 
because of what you did. I am blessed. The blessing of God rests upon my life because of what you did. Divine health belongs to me. I possess it because of what you did. Not because I make all the right choices in my diet. Not because I choose to exercise. Not because of anything that I do in my flesh. I possess divine health because of what you did. Because you took my pains. Because you bore my sicknesses. Because you took stripes upon your back. I was and am healed today. Divine health is a part of my DNA. I have new DNA because of you. My family tree has changed because of you, Jesus. <laughs> you are the patriarch of this family, Papa. So I raise my expectations to what is fitting for a member of this family. And I reject the lies that I am subject to whatever is true of my natural family. I've been born a second time <laughs> into a new family. I am no longer in Adam and subject to what's true that runs in my natural-born family's bloodline. I don't have to have diabetes. I don't have to have cancer because it runs in my family. I don't have to have high blood pressure. I am not subject to negative behavioral tendencies because it runs in my family. I am not subject to curses in my family. I don't have to repeat negative patterns because of what runs in my family. I have a new family tree, and God is the patriarch of this family, and Jesus is my elder brother. I have new DNA. His life flows in me. His DNA is now mine. And I refuse today. And I will refuse again tomorrow and the day after that and the day after that to settle for anything less than that. I don't care what anybody says. I don't care how radical it sounds. I will only identify with this family, with this bloodline, the very bloodline of Christ. He is my life. I have no life apart from him. He is my righteousness. I have no righteousness apart from him. I reject self-righteous ways. I reject self-effort. I deny my flesh the ability to pat itself on the back because I've been such a good little Christian today. There is no glory for me. I glory in the cross of Christ. His cross was my cross. I died with him. I was buried with him. I have been raised to new life with him. My body is his house. His life animates this body. We move 
as one. We speak as one. We think as one. We breathe as one. I have been joined unto the Lord and become one spirit with him. And nothing can separate me from him. Because you cannot separate one. I reject lies of shame. There is no shame for me. Even in my moments of failing, there is no shame for me because Jesus was put to open shame in my place. I reject fear, worry, dread, dread concerning the future. I reject lies of impending doom. The truth is that I am a prisoner of hope. Hope, which is a confident expectation of good. I am not looking to the future with an, an, an entertaining, a feeling of impending doom. I reject that. I look ahead with a confident expectation of good. Goodness and mercy follow me all the days of my life. I choose today to lean into the mind of Christ and not my own understanding. I make use of his thoughts, his purposes, his intellect. <laughs> I'm not limited to the intellect I was born with because of my natural birth. I have in possession the very intellect of Christ. His mind is mine. I make use of his, of, of his intellect, of his wisdom, his desires. And I walk out day by day, moment by moment, his perfect plan for my life. I relax back in his finished work. I trust. I rest. I refuse the invitation to fear. I submit to the righteousness of faith. The only acceptable righteousness in the eyes of God. I submit myself to the righteousness of faith. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I love you guys. I love doing this with you. I hope you are in enjoying this. If this is ministering to you, if you've been doing this with me and this is ministering to you, if it's helping you in any way, um, send me a private message and uh, tell me. I would love to hear it. Okay. I will talk to you guys later.